Thank you very much, and uh, I'd like to thank Sages for the opportunity to present our work. Uh, we have no disclosures related to this video. Uh, you can start the video, please. Per oral esophageal myotomy, or POEM, is a novel operation for the treatment of achalasia that creates a controlled myotomy across the EGJ completely endoscopically. Judging the proper extent of the myotomy in relation to the EGJ can be challenging during POEM. And during our series of 42 cases to date at Northwestern, we've used intraoperative flip to quantitatively assess myotomy effect. This video shows a POEM procedure in a 57-year-old man who presented with three years of progressive dysphagia and regurgitation. Manometry showed aperistalsis and a failure of EGJ relaxation, and esophagram and EGD were consistent with achalasia as well. After initial endoscopy to clear the esophagus and stomach, a functional lumen imaging probe, or FLIP, is placed across the EGJ. The FLIP probe consists of a catheter with a variably inflatable balloon at its tip. Impedance clinimetry is used to measure cross-sectional areas at five millimeter intervals along the catheter to create a graphic reconstruction of EGJ anatomy, which we see here. The primary outcome measure of distensibility is calculated by dividing the minimum cross-sectional area or narrowest point at the EGJ by intrabag pressure. We can see here that this patient had a pathologically low distensibility of 1.8 at the start of his procedure. After initial flip measurement, we proceed with an injection of indigo carmine and saline solution to create a submucosal bleb in the anterior esophageal wall, approximately 12 centimeters proximal to the EGJ. A triangle tip electrocautery knife is then used to create a longitudinal mucosotomy or overlie in this fluid bleb. The scope is fitted with a transparent dissecting cap, which you can see around at the perimeter of the image, which is used to bluntly maneuver the scope through this mucosotomy and into the submucosal space. Once inside the submucosal space, which is seen here, a combination of blunt and electrocautery dissection is used to create a longitudinal tunnel down the length of the esophagus and onto the gastric wall. Here we can see the circular muscle fibers of the esophagus towards the top of the scope view, the loose areolar tissue uh, towards the middle, and the mucosa towards the bottom. Care is taken during this dissection to stay towards the muscle side to avoid inadvertent perforations of the mucosa. Scope is inter in incrementally advanced bluntly, which puts that submucosal areolar tissue on stretch. At that point, it can be safely divided with electrocautery, and blood vessels, as we see here, can be identified more easily. We periodi periodically inject more indigo carmine and saline solution to aid in hydrodissection, as well as mark progression of the tunnel. After the tunnel is believed to be at least three centimeters past the EGJ and onto the stomach, we remove the scope from the tunnel, pass it through the true lumen and into the stomach, and retroflex. On retroflex view, we should be able to see blue dye past the EGJ through the gastric submucosa as the discolor discoloration, which we can see here. This confirms that our tunnel has an adequate length onto the stomach. After tunnel creation, we recheck a flip measurement. As we can see here, addition of the submucosal tunnel, the scale length of which is indicated by the yellow line, has almost doubled distensibility at the EGJ, and this is prior to any myotomy. We then proceed with the myotomy. In order to investigate the physiologic effect of variable myotomy length, we perform the proximal portion of the myotomy starting at six centimeters proximal to the EGJ in two centimeter segments and take flip measurements after each segment. To perform the myotomy, as we see here, the triangle tip cautery knife is used to individually hook and cauterize individual muscle fibers. After the myotomy has progressed two centimeters, we check another flip measurement. The myotomy, indicated by the red line, as we can see here, the first two centimeters has not resulted in any change in an EGJ distensibility. The myotomy is then continued another two centimeters. In contrast to Heller myotomy, during POEM, only the inner circular muscle fibers are divided. This leaves the longitudinal fibers as a safety margin in order to help 
avoid injury to mediastinal structures. Now, after a total of four centimeters of proximal myotomy, we can see, see that there's still been no change in EGGA distensibility. The myotomy is now extended the remaining two centimeters proximal to the EGJ, and then three centimeters distal to the EGJ and onto the stomach. At this point in the dissection, the muscle fibers become more disorganized, and a selective hooking of individual fibers is often no longer possible. At the level of the EGJ, muscle division must proceed slowly in order to avoid both mucosal injury and full thickness perforation into the peritoneal cavity. With the myotomy complete, we take a final flip measurement. We can see that this final segment has resulted in a greater than threefold increase in dissensibility. Reassured by this quantitative assessment of EGJ physiology, we proceed with clip closure and completion of the procedure. Here we can see standard endoscopic clips being applied to close the longitudinal mucosotomy. As with Heller, during POEM, it is essential to extend the myotomy past the EGJ and onto the stomach. However, less is known about the physiologic implications of variable proximal myotomy length. Use of FLIP for real-time assessment may allow surgeons to tailor this proximal length to suit individual patient anatomy and physiology. Thank you very much. Thank you for that interesting video. Dr. DeMista. Yeah, that's very interesting. It's, it's confirmed what we've known for years now, that failures occur related to lack of distal extent of the myotomy, not proximal extent. So do you think there's really a role for these long proximal myotomies that we typically are doing with POEM, or should we really start tapering that down? Yeah, so we've expanded our, our work now uh, during these procedures. We've performed a short proximal and distal myotomy first, and then take a flip measurement and then extend it further proximally uh, to really see if there's any change. And, and so far, we have found a uh, discrete increase after both the EGJ myotomy, obviously, but then the proximal extension to six centimeters does increase the sensibility. But after two centimeters proximally, we're already at uh, the mean of healthy control. So I think it, it is a question of how far proximally we need to go. Dr. Malvin. I, I have a question. The, uh, how, does, how do your flip measurements compare to uh, previously when these were being done laparoscopic at laparoscopic Heller? Uh, there's reasonable data for that. Uh, comparing flip measurements in Heller? Yes. Yeah, so I, I presented our data yesterday, actually, uh, of that comparison, and, and they're almost identical, the overall change uh, in both procedures. Thanks. Quick question. Um, in terms of contraindications, the GI guys dilate these to 30 millimeter balloons. If they've had a previous dilatation, is that a contraindication to a poem? Uh, it's not a contraindication. There have been a, a lot of published data in our own series. Uh, we do say that it, it makes it more difficult. There's, there's more, uh, the submucosa is scarred. Um, so our recommendation is, is during the initial experience at each center to only perform any treatment on naive patients, but after the first 10 or 15 uh, cases, you can certainly expand it to those who've had prior endoscopic therapy. Thank you very much. Thank you.